this. This was entirely on another planet. And my imagination was really stirred by that particular aspect. So I decided then I'm going to be a director. I didn't know what Hollywood was about. I didn't understand the business of movies, <clears throat> nor did I care about it particularly. Howard Hawks was the kind of ultimate hero to me. And I saw his movies as a kid, but I wasn't familiar with some of the older ones and the scope of his work until I went to film school at USC. And all of a sudden, I saw all his movies at once. And I saw something that I hadn't seen in other uh, filmmakers. Uh, let's take an example, Hitchcock. Hitchcock wears his technique on his sleeve. So he's easy to love. Anybody can love Alfred Hitchcock. They can say, well, I can see why he's so good. Howard Hawks is invisible. You don't really understand what he's doing, but he does his technique and works it on you. And you think you're just watching a movie and watching actors. In, in reality, you're watching a master at work. Big Sleep is the kind of, don't you think, it's the ultimate film noir, the detective uh, movie, but it's almost a parody of detective movies in a way. They made the movie and uh, released it to uh, like the army bases and got a bad response. So they went back and reshot the famous dialogue scenes between Bogart and Bacall, the kind of sexual innu innuendo scenes, and it became a big hit. In terms of trying to follow the plot, forget it. You're trying to find out what your father hired me to find out, and I'm trying to find out why you want to find out. You could out. go on forever, couldn't you? Uh, William Faulkner, Lee Brackett, Howard Hawks, and Jules Firthman suddenly realized that one of the murders in the movie couldn't have taken place at the beach because the man who did it couldn't have been there at the time. So they called up Raymond Chandler, who had written the original book, and he said, I don't know. So Hawks said, well, let's forget about the plot because no one cares and I don't understand it. We'll just have fun. So the whole movie is just having fun with the scene. So don't try to make sense out of it. It doesn't make any sense. There are legendary stories about to have and have not. Uh, Howard Hawks was friends with Ernest Hemingway. They used to go hunting and fishing. Hawks made him a bet. He said, I can make a movie, I can make a movie out of your worst novel. And that is to have and have not. It's a, it's a piece of junk. And uh, Hemingway sold it to him. And he made a hit movie out of it. Stars in New York is interesting. Gary Cooper won an Academy Award for that movie. And uh, there's another legendary Hawks story. He took Cooper with him in to see Jack Warner and just had Cooper say, yes, yes, sir, every time Hawks said something. So Hawks said to Warner, well, you're going to leave us alone, aren't you, and make the movie. Don't you think he should? And Cooper said, yes, sir. So after, after he had, it, it's a great thing to bring, a, I've learned, to bring an actor into your creative meetings with you, especially if they're saying yes, sir, and the studio has nothing to say. So it's an ancient trick. Back in the old days, everybody was under contract. Actors, directors, uh, writers, uh, everyone. And the one job was to make movies. And even though there were lots of disputes and lots of, uh, of ego problems, the craft of movie making was a great deal more disciplined than it is today. And I would love to have worked in that kind of, kind of atmosphere. I think the actors of the golden age were the pioneers of what we consider to be movie stars. And movie stars are the most important reason for people going to movies. They want to see a personality that they respond to. Um, the first and most important thing about a movie star is that he's photogenic. And Howard Hawks gave the best description of that. There's some people that the camera loves, and they can do no wrong. No matter what they do, the camera loves watching them. There are some people that the camera does not love, and no matter how talented they are, they can never do it because the camera is not in love with the way they look. Photogenic is the first and foremost um, quality of a movie star. Now, that doesn't mean they're beautiful all the time. They can be unique looking or statuesque or even, even twisted or broken. Humphrey Bogart was not a classic, handsome, leading man, and yet he was charismatic. The camera loved him, loved to watch him. And there was a magic in the old films that I think today we... We, have, we work with a different style, and uh, there's something fun about old movies in the studio system in its height and glory. The moguls loved movies. They didn't love deals. They didn't love profit. They loved movies, and they took chances. 
and they took chances, a lot of them, with their money or they put themselves on the line because they had a belief and a passion about it. And I, nowadays, I think we're driven by, by economics. There are people now who cannot be fired by studio heads. Uh, me, actors, um, if you can't fire someone, then they control it. They run the show. And from my point of view, I can't fire certain actors, even if they're misbehaving or even if they're doing a bad job. Movie making, from my point of view, is all the same. It doesn't matter if you have a star, or you have $100 million, or 10 bucks. It's all the same problem. I don't care. It's nice to have a lot of money and have big stars. It's nice not to have it. It's all the same issue. I don't really care. Uh, I want good actors. I want people who are going to service the story. I want as few egos as possible. I want the work to be efficient. And I want it to be as up to excellence as we can get it, as, as high a degree of excellence as we can make it in the time we're given. My career is, is, is what I was going to do while other things came along. I was making plans, and all of a sudden, something else happened. I got in the movies to make westerns, and along came uh, you know, Halloween, and I got typecast. And I, I love being typecast in, in horror and science fiction. I have, a, I have a great love of it, and I've had a great, great career in it. I mean, I managed to uh, survive for, for almost 30 years making these kind of films. I'm a storyteller, and actors are storytellers, and we're all storytellers. We're all collaborating on storytelling. So I look at it that way. It's a, it's a career. It's a job.